Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. This was a situation between Cain and God. Are we together now? Cain, having discovered that he killed his brother, God pronounced certain judgments upon him, and this was the response of Cain. One to read. And Cain said to the Lord, Uh huh, my punishment is greater than I can bear. 14. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. And from the face, from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass, this was his fear, that everyone that findeth me, hold on before we go to 15, everyone that finds me, no specific, I mean, look at this kind of tragedy in a man's life. Everyone that finds you, destroys you. And then something happened in verse 15. The first demonstration or the second demonstration outside of the Garden of Eden where we see a man being exempted. 15, read on please. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him. And the Lord set a mark upon a man he had cursed. This was his request. Reduce my punishment, O oh God. I know I'm already cursed. You have made me by your pronouncement a fugitive and a vagabond. And everyone, that means there was another mark. He said, anyone that sees me will kill me. And the Bible says, and the Lord set a mark upon Cain. Why? Lest any finding him should kill him. Does that mark still exist today where God can put upon a person less any sickness finding you will kill you less any catastrophe exemption is a reality you have to believe this in the economy of God the aspect and the dimension of kingdom reality you believe is what will become your experience it is important to listen to men of God listen to pastors it is important to be loyal to people but you are only loyal to them provided they are loyal to the word if a man is not loyal to the word i will not listen to him because he will peg me around his limitation and present his limitation to be the full portrait of all that there is in god so believing him in innocence i will still be bankrupt of certain dimensions of spiritual reality Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Meaning if you find at any point that I'm not interested in developing myself in the knowledge of God, you are authorized to divorce yourself from your loyalty to me. And he set a mark upon him. Exodus chapter 8, 22 and 23. Let's give the second scripture tonight and then we'll begin to build. Exodus I like us to read it we're reading 22 and 23 together one to read and i will severe in that day read on the land of goshen in which my people dwell listen 
and that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end that thou mayest know that i am the lord in the midst of the earth last verse and i will between my people and thy people and it says tomorrow shall this sign be exemption is a sign a signboard leads somewhere when i get to a place and i see someone's hair and a clipper upon it it is a signboard saying there is a babbing saloon close that means when god exempts you it's a sign that the hand of god is within the vicinity at work in the life of a man it says tomorrow shall this sign what sign a division swarm of flies will come and devour people and their crops and their savings and everything but i will put a division say lord exempt me shout it with faith lord exempt me exemption is real it is a reality in the system of god there are men there are ministries there are organizations that are working in the reality of that truth and the goal of this teaching is to help us you cannot boastfully speak of triumph in a year when you are watching things kill people i think it was kenny who was over at my place briefly just for a word and then um he met me having a conversation with ejimi we we're discussing something very serious and then he said i think a woman i don't know maybe the woman is here a dear woman of god who lost two children concurrently i think within this vicinity lost a child they went to bury the child before they came back or i think immediately they came back another one died don't ever tell me that's a natural death no sir i know god enough to know witchcraft when i see it are we together and i will put a division a division God, please pay attention to what i'm teaching you i have taught again and let me say this the realities of the kingdom are available in christ but they are accessible through understanding backed up by obedience that's what the bible calls faith faith is not quoting scripture faith is the journey of faith starts with your understanding and accurate comprehension not just of what god has said the end of understanding is you know your role in the equation if you don't know the part you have to play you have not understood it there are so many people listen carefully there are so many people who want the things god has said but they do not they even have the zeal to obey but they are they are in confusion as to what their roles the role that you have to play obedience is key if you are to experience anything in the kingdom deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says it shall come to pass in that day if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord it says to do and observe all that i command thee to do and observe not discuss and wish not desire and intend to do and observe all that i commanded this day that this blessing shall come upon you overtake you right and all of that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you so many believers are living in an illusion that because god is so mighty he will not allow them die like that after all jesus gave his only son let me tell you something this thing called the will of man is an implication on us the will of man stops god from assuming man needs his help your obedience is proof of your dependency in, on god it is costly to sit down and assume that after all god knows i need his help god knows i'm tired of poverty god knows i don't want death god knows the background i come from god knows the witchcraft in my family you have to engage the world through understanding and complete obedience complete obedience say amen the next time you pick your bible don't just search for what god has said search for what he told you to do 
to see what he has said this is how believers become mature let me tell you something brothers and sisters many of the continual woes in people's lives is not because the outstretched arm of the lord cannot show up it is because they are waiting and hoping that because jesus died upon the cross one day he will change my finances one day he will take away evil from my life that day may never come it says there remaineth a rest hebrews 3 4 for the people of god there remaineth a rest he says if you hear his voice harden not your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness and died the day you hear his voice is potentially the day of your breakthrough the meter of your success starts reading from the day you obey not from the day you hear you can hear god when you were 10 years and obey him when you are 40. the meter reads that you have obeyed god for one year obedience is what counts are we together not just blind obedience obedience based on understanding because you can obey nonsense you can obey what pastor said you can obey what apostle said but only hope that what apostle said is really what god said come i can give an instruction and god says let's go right that's how we're going to get the result are we together now and then you move left you see that with that kind of instruction listen two things will happen number one you stand a chance of being destroyed because although you are obeying my word is not consistent with the word of god now let me tell you something i've learned about god i've shared it here the mercy of god which is the last dimension of this series we are going to consider are we together now is such that because you obeyed me totally believing that i came from god god will remove that breakthrough and relocate it to your direction of obedience it should not have happened but because you will have to honor your faith because you received me as touching christ then god will deal with me now for misleading you so that one is between me and god but you are not going to be punished for obeying me as passive this is why you will see a man of god teach nonsense people will obey and still get breakthrough it's not because what the man is teaching is right it's because the testimony of god is upon their obedience and so god will prove himself then the man of god erroneously will justify that because it worked it meant it was correct no as you walk with god a day will come when god will say if you do it again i will deal with you i've been keeping quiet and you have been manipulating money from people the other time you lied that i sent you to a jimmy to collect hundred thousand he gave you and he got a car and you claimed it was a sign that you are you are apostle joshua selma if you tell anybody to give you money again i will personally reveal myself to you in the night vision <laughs> say obedience mary said whatever he tells you to do do it can we pray just for a minute and say lord the spirit of disobedience you know there's such a spirit pray get it out of my life oh god I'm tired of the way it has been cheating me and shortchanging my destiny. Cast it oh, Be very serious about it. There are many of us, the moment God tells you to do something, there is a spirit that refuses you from obeying. Tithe! And the spirit said, don't worry. They are just trying to destroy your money. You are sick and God says, take the communion. It's all this nonsense. I don't want to look like a child. Cast it. It's a spirit of disobedience. No, yes. We will obey. Yes to your will. Yes to your ways. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you very much. Let's do a quick revision. Um, in the last discussion that we had together, we agreed that the first key 
the first principle prescribed by God for any individual any group of people to experience exemption is what we call the God first principle everyone say it after me yeah the God first principle according to Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 the Bible says to seek first his kingdom and I told us that when God becomes secondary in our lives we have signed in for disaster God must become first and all not first alone first and all first and all are we together anytime God becomes first alone that's not enough he must be first and all that's what gives meaning to every other thing that comes in your life and then the second thing we talked about is the mystery of kingdom service and we stop there am I right the mystery of kingdom service and I told us there are three dimensions to kingdom service we took on number one and we said soul winning and establishment please make sure you don't forget we agreed that soul winning talks of helping men find Jesus and leading men to embrace the Lordship of Jesus over their lives and we examined a few scripture I don't want us to go there I'll just quote them quickly Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 it says and they that be wise shall be like the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the brightness of the heavens even forevermore and um, the Bible also said in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 18 to 20 that God has given us the ministry and the word of reconciliation both the ministry and the word of reconciliation and we looked at Proverbs 11 verse 30 the Bible says he that winneth souls is wise and remember what um, David said about wisdom he said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness he says by me kings reign and princes decree justice so part of the benefits of soul winning is that you have access to the wisdom of God that will produce results in your life so we'll take it off from there the second dimension of kingdom service that we must engage for supernatural exemption is service in the house of God write it down kingdom service service in the house of God Exodus please Exodus 23 and then we'll look at 25 to 26 please make sure you write it down and you follow carefully service in the house of God very few believers have been taught that service in the house of God is a system created by God for men to experience supernatural exemption Exodus chapter 23 25 and 26 okay let's read it one two go and ye shall serve the Lord your God uh-huh four things he will do four things I want us to understand what is your own part of the deal you shall and then when you do serve him he shall bless your bread and your water that's number one number two he shall take away sickness from the midst of thee number three verse 26 there shall nothing cast her young or be barren so we see the blessing of fruitfulness and finally the number of thy days i will fulfill all this and more just for serving in the house of god now listen carefully most believers think service in the house of God is a way to help the man of God and help his vision or help the church grow. It is a very dangerous understanding. Part of the kingdom responsibility of any and every believer is to contribute actively to the advancement of his kingdom. And that involves making sure that every structure and platform he has put together finds an atmosphere and an environment where people can be saved built equipped and empowered to represent his purposes and that includes service service in the house of god as prescribed by god 
in fact when the lord was sending moses to pharaoh this is what he said go and tell pharaoh let my people go that they may go and serve me serve me there are many people who have gotten more results than even their personal spiritual lives because they have subscribed to the foolishness of kingdom service are we together now many people do not know that service in the house of god brings blessings many people pity the man of god and say there's nobody holding camera kai let me not waste my nigerian tv college certificate let me just come and help them the moment you have an idea that you are helping a man of god or helping a ministry you have destroyed your potential for blessing through service are we together now every worker in the house of god is an employee by god you have to understand this every genuine worker in the house of god is an employee by god what a privilege to be in the labor force of god you work for people you don't trust their integrity you don't trust them there is no guarantee of their reward and here comes the king of the ages recruiting men and women to make sure that his house is served properly do you believe who lied to you that you will serve the king of kings look there are men who serve god for a living i'm not talking of pastors they serve their way into unimaginable breakthroughs as good as soul winning is do you know it's a terrible thing and this has been the foundation of our teaching even in this ministry that you are born again and not actively useful your energy your wisdom your creativity is not contributing i cannot sit down in a place and be comfortable that the grace the gift the creativity the the energy that god has given me is not participating in the building of the lord's house that when souls are saved you cannot say my energy contributed my wisdom contributed to making this happen i was part of those who set the sound for those outside to hear the word of the lord and be saved i'm part of those who clean the altar to make it conducive i'm part of those moving around when someone fell under the anointing as that demon was flying out of his life i held him if your energy cannot be accounted for as being used to serve God you qualify for disaster it's not a threat it's the truth Job 36 verse 11 read with me people of God Job 36 verse 11 Job 36 please give it to us Job 36 verse 11 one to read if they obey and serve him uh-huh they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure what's the condition if they obey and so if bill gates money if bill gates energy if bill gates institute is contributing if zuckerberg's facebook is contributing to advancing the kingdom he qualifies to profit more than a tongue-talking christian whose energy are we together now if they obey and serve him the moment your energy you remember the bible says love the lord with all your heart uh-huh with all your might all your strength everything about you must contribute in that process you can't say i love god that no 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 the worship songs that lift the spirit of men did they come from your secret place or are you just a recipient you came to the house of god and saw chairs cleaned and you argued and fought with people and sat down and god is watching when i was falling down why didn't you catch me you just allowed me to fall down like that and god is watching listen you can serve your way out of any cause and any yoke i've said it years years and i will repeat it again 
I, I don't want to use the word fear like dread, but I have a great respect for people who serve me in Christ and serve God because I know they are walking their way to an enviable dimension. Service. Malachi chapter 3, 17 and 18. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. My best, Lord, is everything I have. My best, Lord, I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me special. These guys don't know the song. You made me great. I give all I have to you. Yeah, you made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord. I give all I have to you, my best Lord, is everything I have, my best Lord, I give all I have to you. Listen, this used to be our national anthem, those times when we were preparing for crusade, we would sing it and dance as we walked ourselves out like fools. It was a song I wrote as a love song to God. A, a declaration of my surrender how could i give him less you know when you go to buy clothes they will tell you there's this type but if you really have money let's climb up there is a section i don't have that kind of thing with god everything he finds is all of me hmm. service malachi chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 let's read it one to read and they shall be mine uh huh. In that day when I shall make up my jewels, I will spare them. Read on. As a man spareth his son, not that loves him, that serves him. Next verse. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Uh huh. Between him that serveth God and him that serveth him. There is a difference, so sister, don't let anybody fool you and say, Keep serving all these stupid people. That's how everybody will marry and leave you. Just hold on. God will give you a man that is equivalent to your salary of 30 years while the rest are there using WhatsApp to connect and arranging. You are serving. Do you know sometimes people can mock you as you serve God? They'll say you are serving God so that you get husband. Is that not a good reason? Is that not a good reason? Is it not better to serve God and be sure of what he gives? Oh, come on now. Many workers in the house of God are turned to be fools because they spend their time, they spend their energy, and when people who don't understand spiritual things look at them, they say, but Abba, Sam, you are underutilizing your potential that's what they say simply because in many circles maybe the people are not staff of the ministry and may not be receiving anything like a salary and so men you see newspapers insulting men of God and say the labor force they should have employed they now get people in many churches while they are building you will see wealthy people come and they are trying to put it and they insult the men
let me tell you certain things about your service that makes it fruitful number one your service must be willing if you serve god out of compulsion you will never receive a reward from me please understand this this is why as a ministry we never coerce people you don't manipulate people using courses and say if you don't say no 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 that's that's manipulation if there be first a willing mind willing mind service it must be willing number two it must be with joy it must be with joy you don't serve god with joy forget about your reward believe what i'm telling you grumbling all around say oh, today is tuesday again we are just going to pray only god knows where apostle is we are just suffering to pray for him and he's enjoying let me tell you you speak like that god will punish you and the covenant i have with him will punish you two things against you very bad statement and when you stand ba 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 and there you see people pray all their heart and say why are they doing this did they charm them that's the same way when they are enjoying the blessings and you talk god will say keep quiet thank god you saw them when they were praying like fools brothers and sisters i show you the 21st century investment serving god serving god banks will not teach you this oh serving god wholeheartedly with all your heart you are giving god everything you are sweeping the house of god and you know sometimes i watch these people when the power of god begins to move and sometimes people are around under the anointing coughing all kinds of things and you see all those ushers coming and i'm saying my god look at this sometimes they are there scrubbing the toilets cleaning the toilet people with dignity and respite and their reputation they throw it on the ground just because of the house of god if you were god will you leave them like that please answer me if you've been evil no i think i'm compassionate enough to see someone who is serving sincerely and not let him go hungry let me tell you something if you know you are serving god especially in this ministry wholeheartedly you have a right to claim a reward i teach the leaders you can go before god and say lord i am in your payroll no witch no devil no darkness i'm serving lord i swept your house with sincerity lord i was cooking the food this is the evidence of the firewood this is it this pain is a sky is a testament lord when i was given an assignment to lead prayer i did it with all my heart unto you when i was serving as a head of department it's not i service with joy the bible says shall you draw there are many angry preachers when they come on stage you know they are angry as though the members are not blessing me i'm here blessing you and you're not please pastors don't harass any member they didn't call you go and meet the person who called you don't harass any member with money and all of that do you know let me tell you something let me digress and talk about this money thing if you manipulate people to bless you number one that money will never be useful to you and you rob them of their blessing the secret of being blessed from people raise them raise men not money raise men empower people pour your heart and teach them everything and they will surprise you some of you will build me houses in the future no 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 you will you will it's not whether you like me or not you will be too blessed to forget about me it's a programming something is happening to you i know you think i'm just motivating you and then tomorrow someone will be angry and say what is it about this guy you know let me tell you let me teach you a secret of greatness find people who are weak and start investing in them grow with them you can change their future but you can't change history your name is already imprinted in their starting up days not that you see somebody who you did invest in just because he has a car you say is my son are you stupid what did you contribute in his life 
that's why nobody calls a blind person his son nobody calls a deaf person my daughter because they are looking for privileges but there is a way you will bless somebody and pour your heart and they say lord bless me let me find something to do to this person true wealth is men the result of their impact and their gratitude to you for changing their lives all this run around one two you have not said anything you are saying sam i've been seeing you changing clothes and i've not eaten of your your reward that's 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 a that's a lot of foolishness no god is my witness and i say it in the open that i don't have any special person that i corner and say please you are a, a, an elite a group of people you are the ones who will be servicing me that's why I walked the word for myself. You see why it's good to be blessed? So that you can preach and not depend on anybody who tells you preach on, on enemies. Then they change your message simply because they, they are buying generator. You carry your generator and go away with it. Never mix money and ministry. You will be doing a very foolish thing. And not every seed is collectible some seeds are your birthright please don't be foolish pastors i don't know why i'm speaking to you now not every seed is collectible some seeds are you are collecting your dignity you are you are you are trading away your dignity and your destiny you must discern not everything is worthy of receiving the bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field let's continue service in the house of God it must be joyful God is my witness I know God be my witness in the midst of your people I have never I have never since God began to walk with me way before koinonia and this I have never for once turn and complain and say God Kai, this ministry Friday again or this day again those who are close to me know that my work schedule will take the grace of God otherwise you'll fall down and die one day and I do it joyfully tomorrow we're in Gombe preaching again and casting every devil out and we're happy I do these things not because any man is paying me I do it first because I love him but I know that it is a mystery do you know let me tell you something do you know what people call job is simply the rat race of trying to make ends meet when god really blesses you you find out that there's not much to do in life truly truly there is not much to do in life i think it was during the leaders training i was teaching them this when you are really blessed if your salary is hundred thousand let's even be fair two hundred thousand per month in one year that's 2.4 million in 10 years that's 24 million right all things being equal in 20 years that's 48 million so you are working and that's what you plan to get if god gives you 60 million now you will get up in the morning when people are working you just be thrown in and say what exactly do i do today so you see that listen this occupancy we claim to be busy is simply we are trying to look for money to build so you have a 10-year project to build a house and you get it one by one but you can serve your way to a god who does not pay a fixed price he pays according to his riches not according My, your boss pays listen listen don't think i'm flattering you when you are in god's payroll laugh laugh oh, be happy service there are many people who have cheated themselves to serve your way into that child I've been burying for five years and you sit down and all you do is just come and sit down and be pulling your mouth and say Kai why is the house of God hot today and the devil says continue this is the kind of people we like there is a way you can sweep any nonsense out of your life as you sweep the house of God and people are looking at you and saying ah, ah, all these guys apostle is standing they are standing how about even the ladies are standing 
you know even during night vigils they stand what kind of punishment is this they say look at how church has torn your head and God hears you know God hears people yeah Lord I do it as unto you I'm tired but I carry the chairs yes I'm tired but I carry the chairs I was I sometimes I look at the ushers and they are so trained in my opinion I think our ushers are one of the best trained ushers in terms of sensitivity truly speaking and response to the spirit I have traveled to many places great churches big churches and it's surprising when the power of God begins to break out because most times the power of God breaks out at special events so the people know in Koinonia anything can happen I can be talking now and somebody is flying up before you know it there's an usher there they have the sensitivity it's a training all that training just for an usher that's the training of a pastor when you finish that training should you be an usher to be that sensitive to hold people but he's watching brothers and sisters hear me i remember and i always share this there is none of us today that just got up and started ministry every one man of god that i know especially those who came out of zaria you can trace their history to times of dogged kingdom service I jokingly used to tell people i think 1994 95 thereabout i used to play keyboard for a man called reverend emmanuel amechi annie power praise chapel they started it we would have our local assembly and i would trek with my own keyboard i would carry it and go there and i'm just playing little did i know that one day that little shepherd will also become king because that's how he watches you are behind the throne you better leave it and stay and focus on 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 making sure the sheep of god is healthy many of you just eye every throne you see that's why you keep fantasizing the secret to the throne is in your servicing the sheep i remember i would play keyboard for them afterwards they would just come and hug me bless you and on my way home trekking I always say this only two things I received only two things from that ministry wonderful people don't have any I don't even know where they are today during the launching of the man's cassette no CDs then they gave me one bottle of Fanta and one free cassette that's all I got for laborious service I carry my keyboard by myself I walk like a madman and I get one bottle of Fanta and and uh, and cassette he was into prisons ministry but God was watching you see that many of you just see before you start admiring people find out their track record they have a track record of service genuine service koinonia is where when people come they throw away their golden crown nobody comes to do any big man you are either serving God or you sit down there. Don't come and say, I am a, you don't come here outside and say, please prepare a special seat. And if you are special, we know. Once they don't know, you find somewhere and sit down. You don't come and say, look, I'm here together with my peer. No, no, we don't do that. Kingdom service. You want to experience triumph? You must be willing to serve God and serve in the house of God. Your energy your time your zeal your gift joyfully not complaining and say i don't like my head of department tells everybody thank you except me he didn't employ you no he should say so but if he doesn't turn to god and say lord you are the one i'm serving i serve you with all my heart lord you see every time i pray here lord you see every time during the rehearsals I spend hours and hours do you know let me tell you something and I want to submit to you I consider myself to be one of the most privileged man of God of my age range and my level I truly believe so God has given one of the best sets of workers in Koinonia I've told them too many times I think you should clap you really should clap hallelujah 
it is difficult to find a ministry where men are very anointed gifted and yet very loyal and sincere and true you don't find it you never find arguments going on in, uh, during the leaders meeting uh, no, no 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 total submission total loyalty to god there are departments i don't visit for months and they never bend to the standards they are giving the leaders serve with sincerity and truth it's one of the secrets to my ministerial efficiency because most of the time is spent in prayer and the word and general oversight not going around to monitor because you suspect that this are no 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 faithful people are we together and among other reasons is because we sowed that seed of faithfulness so we are not surprised Do you serve God joyfully and have you been indoctrinated and laughed at sisters I speak to you particularly because there is this madness that flies around the moment they see a young lady serving in the house of God people just look at her those who say ah she's just serving because of husband others are saying she's just serving because uh, all these ladies just wasting away Jerry look at a fine girl like this will now come and make herself an idiot in church who told you the house of God is a place where destinies are wasted who preached that to you where did you get that indoctrination that the house of God dries up the potentials of people let me tell you the future some of you what you are doing now is already the price for the future when you see men running around God will say I forbid you you have served too much to serve men I'm, I'm speaking to you from my heart tonight how can I bow down before you and then bow down before a man no way Hey, how can I kneel down before you and then kneel down before a man? No you must serve somebody in life, either God or your shrine, where you are coming out from, that you are supposed to be the next priest. You left carelessly at the altar, is still crying for a servant you better secure yourself serving God there are many people who do not know that service is a mystery of exemption you can't be idle on uh, uh, idle on earth a master will occupy you you don't serve God you serve sickness you don't serve God you serve pain you don't serve God you serve a bad and wicked and foolish and stupid man you don't serve God you serve another demonic roaming around your family let me tell you any arrow sent from anywhere will come and meet me serving it will bounce back a thousand times because there is a system there is an insurance system in God for those who serve him he says he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm he said I shall not die but live and declare as I'm serving I immune myself from death I think I was discussing with a few people um, a few days ago look at me let me say something dominion dominion is not running away from things because of fear of Satan is prevailing over them and triumphing over them are you getting what I'm saying let me give you an instance I think a discussion came up and then um, someone was asking a question and then I tried to clarify it if I'm supposed to go and preach now and you have a vision or a dream a true vision that my car is having an accident I will still go you see I will not allow that vision stop me from preaching 
my limitation is only the voice of god not the fear of death dominion is to change it and go anyway that's dominion if you allow fear destroy you you will not do many things are we together yeah there are too many people being governed by fear they claim to be walking in dominion they have the money for flights they will never fly because every time they're about to fly they see something in the night let me tell you something brothers and sisters you are not glorifying god if you live a, an escapism life you are always escaping i just saw sam that there will be an accident and then sam says i'm not going again let's just be careful one day that ah, ah. you've not seen people sit quietly in their houses and a truck came and killed them the name of the lord rather is a strong tower the righteous enter so as i'm driving i'm in the name the boss collides with the name before it collides with me this is my understanding and you know i travel a lot we're about traveling tomorrow now i'm saying these demons are hearing me the spirit of death is hearing me they are probably going to stand in the road to kill me tomorrow and i'll be back on friday now you imagine that kind of frustration <laughs> apostle don't speak like this oh apostle we love you don't don't trouble them and they don't trouble i trouble them big time that's where i'm alive don't trouble them <laughs> you don't fear two people if you fear god that's enough How can I bow down before you and then bow down before me? No way. Hey, hey. No way. How can I sing a song before you and then sing a song before me? No way. not our God he's my God you are my God it's a revelation of him that I have it's a covenant with him that I have you are my God listen a fish never fears plane crash because it has no business with the air are we together so when the bible says i am far above i have no business with certain realities they only affect you when you dwell in that realm i don't know how to make you believe this thing listen i speak not only because god said it I speak because I found what I have to do to make it work. When you make boastful statements like this without knowing your part, you will die like a chicken. The very next day, the cow will so butcher you leg and head together and scatter you. I've seen the spirit of death. I I've told you. Yes. I wish I were an artist. I would have drawn it for you. You see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. These spirits know men. They know those who know them. It's like somebody who is from your neighborhood and goes somewhere where they don't know him and says, my father is the CEO of Guarantee Trust Bank. And all of a sudden, you just come and say, ah, how now? Let's go home. And say, you are falling my hand. That's how spirits work. When they enter a place, they search for who knows them. When they don't find, they start roaring. But when others step in, they say, oh, you give us where we have kingdom business to do. Kingdom business to do. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. See, let me tell you, if I were faking this thing, you would have known now. I have laid hands on too many people with cancer to not have received it myself. I've laid hands on too many people with communicable diseases not to receive it myself. I have done this ministry work for a while. Medical science gives us a time range when exposing yourself to certain things will destroy you. This thing is in your presence. I do all of that. No. It's called Zoe. The life of God. There is a record that we have it. 
were rising gradually to walking in the fullness of it but it's no excuse for darkness when we see them we stamp them say amen, amen. but are you serving your way because not everybody qualifies to enjoy this thing we're talking about there are people who your service your service cannot rise as a memorial unto god isaiah 18 let's walk this and go to the next one quickly we have to pray isaiah 38 sorry isaiah 38 media help us isaiah 38 let's look at a very interesting story here about a death sentence over a man by a true prophet isaiah chapter 38 are we there let me read it when i get to a place where all of us will join i would let us know in those days was hezekiah sick unto death sick unto what new living translation don't turn there but our new don't don't give us new living translation modern day translation is an incurable disease an incurable disease is a disease unto death it says in those days was hezekiah sick unto death and isaiah the prophet the son of amos came unto him saying listen thus saith who not a demon the lord set thine house in order for thou shalt and not live isaiah was not a false prophet he spoke from the mouth of the lord let's see something that hezekiah did verse 2 then hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the lord let's see the content of the prayer verse 3 and he said remember now O lord i beseech thee how i have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and i have done that which is good in thy sight when you read about hezekiah you find out that he served god with his life his resources were coming to that and hezekiah wept so lord is this how you reward your servants will i serve you and now die that men will say i served you and you killed me verse 4 then came the word of the lord again to isaiah saying go and say to hezekiah thus saith the lord god of david thy father i have heard thy prayer i have seen thy tears behold i will add unto thy days 15 years verse 6 i will deliver thee and this city out of the king of assyria and i will defend this city he reminded god do you have the petitions that you take before god and say lord look at the devil destroying my family i'm a faithful servant in your house lord last week 100 people got born again and oh god i was part of those who led them outside remember and god arises and say no you are putting pressure on my integrity i must arise and act for you hallelujah it must be willing it must be joyful And you must serve God with diligence. Diligence. You don't serve God with laziness and slackness. You don't serve God with slothfulness. You serve Him willingly. You serve Him joyfully. You serve Him diligently. Let's go to the next one. The next dimension of kingdom service. So there's soul winning and establishment. There is service in the house of God. And then number three, kingdom investments. Serving God with your resources. Kingdom investments. One of the strangest mysteries of exemption. Kingdom investment. It literally is an investment serving god with your resources serving god with your resources zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 popular scripture we all know it it says cry yet saying 
Thus saith the Lord. Zechariah, not Zephaniah. Cry yet saying, Thus saith the Lord. My cities, he says, through prosperity shall be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion. Cry yet say, thus saith the Lord, my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall choose Jerusalem. My cities shall through prosperity listen i want you to know that financial resources and other kinds of human resources play a major role in kingdom advancement don't mind those who tell you money is not important in kingdom advancement no that's not true that's a wrong theology we have money mongers and we have those who are frustrated with the issue of money both of them are wrong money is important just like the anointing financial resources are important for kingdom activities and god's system is such that listen men wholeheartedly commit their lives their resources and everything to the building of the kingdom by faith in obedience and total trust and they in turn schedule seasons of untold breakthroughs and blessings is how the system of God works my cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad so whoever contributes with his resources to making the house of the Lord built to making sure that the activities of kingdom advancement keep on going that person qualifies for certain blessings please give us Psalm 112 verse 9 NIV if we can get it Psalm 112 verse 9 I love the rendition uh, that the NIV puts. If we can have that, Psalm 112 verse 9. This is the reason why many people, Psalm, did I say 112? 122, I beg your pardon. 122, Psalm 122 verse 9. I'd like us to read. One, two, read for the sake of the house of the lord our god i will seek your i seek it not just to buy jeeps and cars houses vacations that's too small a reason to subject yourself to the stringent laws of wealth but it is for the sake of your house i will seek your prosperity i'm trusting god to bless me with resources oh god so that i will contribute in getting your activities done listen please the message of prosperity is not a demonic message there is such a message called the message of prosperity and it is not a demonic message it may have been taught selfishly it may have been taught inaccurately but that does not stop the fact that there is such a message and it is part and parcel of the truths of the gospel that believers must learn and know is God's economic system where people empower the advancement of his kingdom and receive rewards listen listen kingdom investment has nothing to do with just tithes kingdom investment is not tithing kingdom investment is not worship offering kingdom investment is a sacrifice a commitment between you and God to commit your resources on a continuous basis to seeing that his house is built to seeing that his kingdom is advanced the gospel is preached lives are saved this is a commitment it is not a special thing that you gather believers and say okay right now all of you bring one one thousand naira it is the inaccurate understanding of the things of God that sometimes will have to necessitate those special events. Listen, part of the financial system of my life, every major money that comes to me, I know that investing in the kingdom is part and parcel of my spiritual growth process. No special event. If X amount comes to me, my tight God's portion is going 
I will never come to the house of God empty handed. I come with my worship offering joyfully. There is a portion for my parents to bless their life. There is a portion to bless people and improve on their lives. But then there is a huge, and I mean huge truly, for the advancement of the kingdom. I have a list of men of God. I have a list of ministries that I sow into their life perpetually, continually. Some per week, some per month. Continually. Except resources don't come. Not big. Some of them don't even know me. Kingdom investment. With all humility, and I say this just to let some of us know, not just to brag or make noise. There are many programs that have happened in this city, many programs that have happened around this nation and parts of the world that I just keep quiet. I just carry a seed as God directs, and I say, You go and sow. Go and give that man of God. Sometimes I say, just tell him no problem. There's no need announcing it. Sometimes I say, don't even tell them. Just go and sow this seed. And I'm happy to see that my seed is saving souls. I'm happy to see that someone's life, posters are printed through my seed. I'm happy. This water now is probably someone's seed. You see that? This pulpit right now, is someone see a commitment to contributing resource wise to see in the kingdom you don't have to wait i keep challenging believers listen i wish i'm not the one teaching you this but i love you too much i have a scriptural obligation to teach you the truth and that i will do regardless of how you feel i will teach you the truth don't think this is some system to coerce money no 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 i fear god too much to do that but I have to tell you the truth because it's what I'm also doing. A true kingdom investor finds a need in the house of God. He's not told about the need. You find it. The same way you find a need in a rich man's life. Out of psychophancy to get project. I say, honorable, I've seen that you've been wearing only two shoes and he says, you won't believe that I have only three. He said, I brought five. You see that you brought five because you are hoping that you will buy relationship and it will work for you hallelujah find a need in the house of god look three of us let's come together koinonia needs more cameras how much is it x amount let's come together let's do an inventory consult with these people the house of god oh i think that I have 2,000 Naira and my 2,000 Naira can buy three chairs in the house of God. You come on Friday dancing with three chairs. Three breakthroughs in your life. As you drop it, a sinner sits on that chair and the fire from heaven falls on him. As he's getting born again, let me tell you, God is issuing a warning. He sat on that chair to be blessed. Find a need. Don't wait until you are told. You find a need. Ah, I look at this. What can I do? Find a need. But many believers don't. They just sit down. You need to see how believe offering time is, is one of the most irritating time in many churches. Offering time and somebody just brings out something and tells his wife or whoever, do you have? She says, no, it just they take. They bring out 1,000, they put it back. They bring out 500, they put it back. They bring out 200 naira, the new one, they put it back. Then they carry the old one. They oh, shall come and drop it. And God is watching. As soon as they finish, they move straight to Chicken Republic and burn 5,000. Take ice cream for starters. Take all of this and call friends, sometimes who are not godly. Let's come and enjoy. And God sees your passion. And then you lift your voice. I love you, Lord. God is saying, you're a liar. That's, that's not true. You don't love me god so loved the world that he gave is that same attitude that follows men in marriage is that same attitude that follows in everything when you love without giving you a liar and a hypocrite true love comes with giving passionate sincere giving let it be a sweet sweet sound in your ears 
when I lift up my seed before God as I sow those seeds I am happy it is my joy that I want to live my life in such a way that every month I'll be buying a bus for a church somewhere what a joy to get to a church and see and say what is your budget and they say we need a new cathedral how much 20 million and you say okay let me just have a private discussion with the pastor and say pastor just give me the plan send your engineers to supervise in three months that church is lifted quietly noiseless contribution you think God will allow men to will if you have a helper like that will you allow men kill him if your job is to pray for that person and the devil and God wakes you and says the devil wants to take his life oh no come on you will get an energy you never knew you had you will pray and say God it's better to take one of my legs than to kill that man but apostle I don't have much you will never have much you give your way to that much you give your way to that much you can sit down and say look what can I do for the worship team? We have just 100,000. Sam, this is for the dressing of the worship team. So they look good. This is to buy time for the media department. You don't have to come and say, make sure Apostle knows I'm the one. You have, you have killed and scattered and destroyed your potential. We live in a very political uh, Christianity where people like announcement and accolade. We are now announcing that Chief A and B is the one who gave that golf outside. Please, you have destroyed everything. He says, as you give, let your right hand not know what you I'm not saying there's no place of honor. Don't get me wrong. What can I do for you, my Lord? I want you to know my heart. not a question of what you can do for me but what can I do for you my that's love that's genuine love by the grace of God let me tell you and I say it with all humility I don't want you to do it for me there are people here people here I know they have committed themselves with resources to say Joshua Selman it should never it should never happen that you are looking for water and my seed does not come see let me tell you I say it with all humility I'm a blessed man I'm not talking about your money at all I don't serve God because of money not at this level God has been faithful are you getting what I'm saying now so don't think it's some coercion so that somebody will just bring an envelope no no but I'm telling you, you don't practice this, you will not be exempted though, from the woes where the heavens of men will be brass and their earth iron. Sacrifice. Don't listen to these junks that people have, have been warning you about people who don't fear God and don't know anything about God. To be carnally minded, the Bible says, is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace canal people come and discuss all kinds of things you don't serve god with your resources you will serve sickness you will serve trouble you will serve divorce you will serve pain you can serve your way and vow your way i think i've shared that testimony here how that there was a particular uh, man of god it was years ago he gave this testimony a very true one him and his wife god is my witness they were in a meeting and i think they needed to roof a church or something like that and whilst they were there the man of god preaching was challenging people to sow into the work of god you know genuinely not out of eye service and manipulation genuinely and the lord just spoke to the man clearly that he should give up his house his real house real estate his property to give up his house and moved to a rented house can you imagine that costly instruction he didn't know how to tell his wife so according to him he said as soon as he held his wife's hand she started crying because the lord had told her the same thing too brothers may you marry a wife like that oh that will allow you obey god you marry a bad wife 
you will not be exempted. May you marry a wife if all you are looking for is figure eight and you don't open up your spirit to pick signals that God can say, this is what we are doing. And your wife will say, I may not understand, but I trust you. I trust the word of God upon your life. Say amen. amen. And be serious about what you just had. Go around and choosing nonsense and destroy your life because to be carnally minded is what? Death. You won't know now. By the time the euphoria of young life is gone, you will start seeing what it means to live with a man or a woman who does not fear God. God says, go left. They say, no, we are going right. God says, go right and you perish like Jonah. Hallelujah. I believe I have had a chance to repent had he not married Jezebel because he looked like a calm king. She looked like a wicked demon that would not allow him. He looked like a calm person, but her presence there was not a good thing. So he held his wife's hand and they agreed the will of God be done. How many of you know that if God gives you and your wife that kind of instruction, relatives will kill you? Even Christians. They'll say, which church first are you going to give the house? That man that is already rich. You, you people will never stop becoming fools in Nigeria. Because to them, giving is helping. Then they will now tell you, we have the poor and the needy in the villages. You don't give a poor man to be rich. You give a rich man to be rich. Learn this principle. You bless poor men. To secure the help of God, he says to answer you in the days of trouble. But when you want to rise the law of honor, you sow to a man that has attained the dimension you desire. Don't give poor people expecting to be rich. All that superstitious thing that they say, meet a leper and drop one naira is witchcraft. You drop it, you will be broke, I tell you. You sow into an anointing to rise. I didn't sow to people less than me to be where I am. You so higher. The queen of Sheba knew. That's why she carried gifts and came to Solomon. Do you bless a rich man? That's why you are sowing into the anointing. The very anointing that God has. So you rise up to his realm. People do foolish things in the body of Christ with no spiritual intelligence. And then we are doing zealous things. But they don't bring results. To us giving is helping. So many people say the poor and the needy. Jesus said the poor you will always have with you. You will always have. Don't be a hypocrite. You will always have with you. The person who is writing that junk journalism, he didn't sell his iPad to give the poor. He used an iPad of 200,000 to write nonsense about men of God. You see that? Be careful. How you hear. Don't let people make the truth, the simplicity of the gospel, become just a social discussion. A spiritual man is not just a homo sapien. A spiritual man hails from above with another life and another economy. You have to understand this. They obeyed God and they gave up the house. According to him, all hell broke loose everywhere, went haywire. You know, people will insult the woman. You mean you cannot advise your husband? What a stupid woman. The man look at your wife and children and when they went to a rented apartment gave up that i think they sold it and moved the church oh I, I hope i'm getting the story right and then i think he said that god made a vow to him that he would never need to buy a house again in his life never and that man at the time he was speaking i think he was saying he had well over 10 houses none 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 came from his money one not part and then you complete it somebody builds a house furnishes it and say god instructed me now you see people operating at such a realm you don't know what they gave up you give up things to go up oh. you give up things to go up you don't carry luggages to go up spiritually financially leadership you when you see people rising find out what they left behind nobody rises with luggages you must be willing to give up some things to rise in the anointing you must give up some things to rise in ministry you give up some things to rise serving god with your resources there are instructions today i don't like talking about my personal life and the instructions that god has given me but those close to me know 
my life is like a madman i am a reckless giver if you are close to me and we are sharing accounts you will take me to court because the lawyer will even be tired because you will not know what to say again i don't know how many times i have emptied my accounts at the instruction of the lord to zero zero i'm not talking there is one secret one somewhere sincerely god is my witness as a ministry we have done it there was a year god gave an instruction at the start of the ministry to empty everything i told the finance department oh yeah god said it let it go it was less than one week how many days less than one week almost 10 times that amount came back do you believe this into the kingdom lord this is for your glory there are times and i say this with all humility the finance department will send budget of another department and i tell them don't bother what a joy it's not because this is this is not my ministry this is god's ministry right i only lead this ministry by the privilege of his election but it is god's ministry but what a joy i tell them don't worry don't worry sometimes i see the concern in the treasurer's face and i'm happy i will never pity myself as to remain at my current level no what are you willing to give up to go up god is speaking to somebody what are you willing to give up to exempt you let me tell you there are people seeds i know is a covenant with god darkness will come and loom around them they will come out like smoke before the fire nothing will happen because the investments they have made for the kingdom is like it says is, is like the blood of Abel crying. There is blood through their sacrifice that is crying to the heavens. You try to walk against me, you are, a, you are a joker. I tell you, I say this with all humility. You are a joker. It's not even me that will fight. It's the altar that is full of seeds. When you hear people cry and say, my altar, that thing is not some superstitious thing. An altar is a place of sacrifice. It's a threshing floor. Bishop Oyedeko, I think it was him or somewhere in living faith. A story was being given about, I think it was a woman who was a tither or a giver in the house of God. And armed robbers came. They were knocking. I think they were about to shoot the man or the woman, something like that. And I think, is it the giving booklet or the tithe booklet? The person brought and dropped it on the ground and said the armed robbers should cross it and come and kill them. And they could not do anything. When you engage them, they walk. When you imagine them, they don't walk. When you sit down and wish that they walk, they don't walk. They must be engaged. There are things I have prayed for once that came into my life with speed. There have been times in my life where I cried that God defend me and I prayed once over it. Because God said, no problem. You've got this covered, your seeds. Do you have a sacrifice like Hezekiah in this time of exemption? lord i want a job lord everybody in my family is not making it except me thank god i'm a christian have you forgotten that your elder one is a pastor and still his wife has not given birth he's he's winning souls and his wife has not given birth sacrifice sacrifice hannah gave her home before the child came and said god look this is not about me oh. this is about you before the child arrives, I've dedicated him and God says, that's it. I give it to you. I know people here who have sacrificed. Please come, Ejimi. Let me tell you something about Ejimi. When we were preparing for a crusade the first time, among all of us, sorry, I'm having to say this. I know he may not like it. He was the only one among us that time that had a computer, a desktop. Right? Then he used to make shirts. The poster of the first crusade, he designed it by himself with joy as a sacrifice. And then I remember when we, that time, we needed a lot of money and, you know, we're trusting God, you know, people were sowing, but it was a need. And he did two things. Now, I'm not saying you should do it, but he did two things that I will never, never forget. Number one, he carried his laptop his his computer i was just passing suleiman and i saw notice and i saw the description of the laptop and i met him i said why with jesus joy he said no that laptop must go we need the money i 
have told you about our ladies who would climb trees they were members of the worship team they were members of welfare they were members of everything the ladies because there was no money to buy firewood then with joy they would sing we still have the videos that time people like victor and aaron aaron was then please stand up aaron aaron was in charge of protocol this aaron you see victor that you see the head of protocol he was in technical then that time they would carry wood on their head and then dance hey -oh. that was the song they used to sing hey -oh. dancing hey -oh. my season has come i remember hold on 11 years ago 11 years ago pouring their heart to the kingdom are we together see brothers and sisters i remember his mother dear mother of blessed memory one silver watch the most expensive watch then i had ever used remember when his mom went to london and bought it and said they should give me the day god asked me to sew that thing i wanted to die but i still gave it hi god but i get it i mean it went i'm glad it went I'm glad it went it would have been the only one i still have till now the mother alongside other women in lagos mobilized welfare packages remember and they brought all of that i remember that time aaron we went with two luxurious buses when we were going to for the for the crusade in abuja how they mobilized it i do not even know we're praying and planning bless you and thank you jimmy so don't be surprised when his children are intelligent and happy he served his way to that his children will never beg for bread not when i'm alive even if he decides to be careless with his life it's too late not when i'm alive if he decides today that i will never do anything kingdom again together with his wife i say i i, I agree to, for you to be an extra luggage in my life let's keep going When we are talking about koinonia 10 years from now will your name be mentioned no 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 don't say don't do this not an issue of amen i'm asking you a serious question will you say will you say listen listen will you say this speaker came because my seed was there oh i remember the tie that this gentleman used right people giving their hearts and their lives graduates standing as if they are foolish you think these guys are idiots for just standing like this working some of them have come from their various workplaces and it's evening there are people who come in every week from other states it's a sacrifice see let me tell you the, the moment you find yourself complaining about the house of god know that that spirit is there to destroy you because everything god designs in the kingdom is for your good not for his good he's already self-sufficient don't forget el shaddai he said if you will not praise me it is within my power to raise up stones god don't replace me i'm still available and i'm willing there is such a thing like replacement because now i neither hot or cold i will spew thee from my mouth for as long as i live i will not only praise god my resources must join me and praise god what use do i have having cars when the house of the lord is not advanced real estate real nonsense the real estate is a kingdom estate traveling on vacation spending a million dollars over a week no except i've done something satisfactorily for the kingdom there is a minimum of amount of offering that i cannot give i will be wicked and unfair to god and to his faithfulness in my life if at this level he has brought me financially i give god certain levels of offering no there is an amount i trust god to get to a target 
of an amount that I give God never less than it if it is in your heart God will bring it in your hand if at this level I squeeze 1,000 I squeeze 2,000 give God as an offering I'm a wicked person how much do I eat with how much are my clothes and then the house of God 2,000 3,000 me no there are some of you as you are sitting here God has lifted you what you're giving has remained so your giving drew you back because it said your giving told God you were not yet qualified and God said if your giving says remain I can't say you should rise remain I have given dangerous seeds in my life I have sown seeds on behalf of my parents for their longevity I have sown seeds on behalf of my children unborn I have sown seeds on behalf of this ministry ask those who know me this ministry is a giving ministry the economic system of koinonia is a crazy system that's why many times I thank God for the way church runs because if it's America I'm sure they would have sued us now say no 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 this and that and that you sow that seed and God gives you faithful people he may not give you money back but he will give you one person that will reduce headache there has not been any case in this ministry that has starved me of sleep to say somebody just came and is stubborn no parents you can use sacrifice to bail every nonsense out of your children when a woman gives birth a man buys a jeep for her which is wonderful right when a child takes first position they fly him to hawaii rather than doing that invest in his future first and say lord this is for my child i buy this speaker for the house of god not nonsense not change not carry torn clothes and say lord i give it in your house you don't give god rubbish no you give god i will not give god anything that will not cost me anything I look forward to times oh god sees my heart when if i hear any church make noise they want something before they say anything is provided and god will open doors for you beyond your imagination if your if your purpose of financial prosperity is just to wear designers and fly private jets is too small a reason for God to rend the heavens and give you a blessing that you will not have room enough Lord if you're healing someone in this city don't do it without me that's my prayer Lord don't do it without me oh Lord if you're changing someone in this nation Please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Oh, may, 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 may it never come to a point in my life when my seed stops advancing the kingdom. Please tell me, what else will I be doing with it? Servicing sickness? Servicing poverty? As I'm speaking to you, you see your greed rising you are trying to believe what I'm saying but your greed is fighting you I wish you would push this thing away no sir God wants to help you I show you the mysteries of blessings that people just rise up God has said it's the year of trial because you are still going to see people rise up in strange ways you will see it's already happening to people you are hearing testimonies of people and you are saying what exactly are they doing that they are rising because in the world system you have they have to show you the boss and the salary slip but this one does the, the boss is invisible the business is by faith but the reward is the only thing you see don't do it without me don't do it without me sacrifice of your life your resources sometimes when i'm going for ministrations i'm so tired sleeping in the car or sleeping in the plane and i'm asking myself why why am i doing this do i have to do this and i just remember it's a privilege i take pleasure 
in worshiping I take pleasure in worshiping I take pleasure in worshiping you Lord take my body my soul my money and breathe on me he has to take everything take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me listen if you give God your spirit you give God your brain and leave your pocket you are carnal and a liar because where your treasure is that's where your heart is are we together my life my finances and every part of me is open for his scrutiny his probing and his instructions any day any time without prior notice belongs to him we're going to pray you want to be exempted there is a price I know many of you just believe I will just tell you be exempted in Jesus name brothers and sisters there is a price I won't lie to you I fear God too much to deceive you what is the disadvantage of not being exempted write it down the disadvantage of not being exempted was in the scripture we considered with Cain he said all who see me will slay me he didn't say all men all things that see me will slay me the disadvantage the major disadvantage of not being exempted is that you become a victim of anything and everything write it down you become a victim of anything and everything although redeemed although potentially speaking you should not be a victim of those things but you become a victim of anything and everything without hope for recovery the bible says these people have been alienated from the life of god through ignorance it says having their understanding darkened they have been alienated from the life of god alienated from the life of god through ignorance listen it's a risk to give birth to a child and not know whether that child will live long or not it's too risk if you've lost a child i i my heart goes out to you don't feel bad but i'm telling you there is a way out please listen to me it's a risk not knowing that you come out today and go back remember there are those who have done it we are not the first to do it remember our song we are surrounded by many they have crossed this river there are men who have lived that long i looked at my father and my mother one time that i went to greet them and i was just smiling do you know one thing i know will keep my parents long thanksgiving if there is anything i've learned about my father my father is a man who can thank god in a way that will annoy you he would thank you know how old people thank god they thank god for things you consider to be silly we young people say please if it's the air you breathe is we, we thank god until the day you breathe through a tube for one month you stay and breathe in and out you will say thank you i've had the opportunity to go to hospitals and to see people i remember the most recent i think it was sometime last year Want to see one, went to see one of our ladies and I went there close to her bed I watched somebody die I watched it the process I, at that point all your greed follows you to the grave all your seeds that have refused to be given like the rich fool the consequences of not using your resources he said this day he sat down and built a barn and put the money and said my soul you have money in gt bank you have money in zenith you have real estate you are a millionaire fine rest and god says thou fool your soul today today will be required of you money does not follow men to the grave 
Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Pay attention and leave. Can you know that your life will be great? Oh, I'm standing today now. One shoe, one bag, one room, one stove, one pot. But I'm sowing my way. Is there a guarantee that tomorrow this loss will work for me? And then I will be the one to be able to turn back and be a blessing. Ask me. I have the answer. That's how we rose. That's why when people are bragging and saying we are this, we are the intellectuals, Harvard this, we went to this. Some of us know how we came. We served our way through the mercy of God. And look what God has done today. Do you know why it is marvelous in our eyes? Because it is the Lord's doing. If it's a man's doing, it's too small to be marvelous in your eyes. You are marvelous here. You are marvelous here. You are marvelous here. Marvelous here. That's what men will begin to say about your life. That you are marvelous here. Never allow any man despise you. You may not have it now, but you are walking your way. Sister, you don't need to prove to anybody you can buy nothing. The word of God will prove itself. Continue. You may not have what it takes. Wear your one shoe honorably. Don't borrow anybody's shoe and tie to prove any point. There's too much truckload of proofs coming in the future. I know you are a man of God. You have only one tie. Iron it with honor and sow. Sow into the kingdom. Don't buy suits. You are not wise if you do that. No. I want to package myself so that I will look like a apostle. You are cheating yourself. You won't look like me soon. Let me just tell you the truth. You will between me and you is a ladder of obedience. You will have to climb it diligently and by the grace of God. My job is to shorten your journey, not take it away. That journey is there. You will walk it. That's why I don't pity people when they cry. Sometimes it's good to let the tears roll. I love you, but I cannot stop your journey. I can only reduce it. So sometimes people cry and say, Apostle, nothing is working. And they think I will clean the tears. I say, no, let it flow. Because to, if it does not flow, you will not clean somebody's own. It's not wickedness. There are times I've seen people in situations I want to bless them and the Lord said, no, don't interrupt what I'm doing in their life. They are, I'm, I'm showing them something. And I'm saying, Lord, but they know I can help them. Say, no, no, I'm teaching them trust. Just like it's happening to someone right now. Every door of your helpers have closed. God is saying it's deliberate. Don't even try to pray for open doors because I'm the one closing it to teach you. I'm teaching you how to rejoice in the storm. I'll praise you in the storm. Remember, I will lift my hands. You are who you are. No matter where I am every tear that falls you hold in your hands listen let me tell you something i'm preaching a message to you now koinonia don't be ashamed of your tears let it flow let everyone see you cry so that when you rejoice they won't say you cheated you followed the laws you cried mommy you may cry but cry in faith cry honorably as you sow the seed there is he that weepeth bearing precious seeds i remember the day the lord asked me to sow 80 percent of my clothes everything 80 percent 80 percent of everything before then he had asked me to give everything i've shared with you the testimony 2007 in port Harcourt, i carried everything i had home and abroad plus the rechargeable lantern that was all i had laid my hands and prayed on it for three hours dragged it to church then God decided to disgrace me. I was in the overflow outside. When people were giving, God said I should sit down. When people were now giving cars and lands, when they finished, God said you can now go. I was moving. Ladies were looking at me. Guys were looking at me. But I was looking at my future. 
Oh yes I was. Oh yes I was. And I went and dropped that thing. The bag was not, I don't even know what they did with it. When they dropped that bag, I went back and sat down. I did it for his house. And the Lord spoke to me and said, My son, from today, you have entered wealth. Men walk by mysteries. My mother is one of the happiest people around. It's not just because we are alive. It's because of the quality of the children she has. We're discussing with Ejimi today. I bless my parents till the day Jesus comes. Till the day Jesus comes without fail. Whether they obey scriptures or not, I am obedient to them. The same way the priest, they, they receive tithes on behalf of the Levites, I've received it for them. May you do that for your parents. So. May your obedience today make your parents live long. So that you will take away this stress that is killing parents young now. You see a parent 70 years they can't walk because the son at 40 is still coming. Mommy, please, can you borrow me 100,000? I say, How much is my pension? He said, Just give me. Are you determined to be exempted? We're going to pray. Sister, take my message seriously. Barrenness is still real. Barrenness does not just come on bad ladies who live wayward lives, there are sincere people. You can start exempting yourself now. Don't wait until the day you get married and try and try and try and nothing happens. Gentleman, don't wait until the day a landlord harasses you. You say, I'll start giving. Start now. Don't wait and say, Apostle, but I've, I've not, I'm not even in a relationship. That's the good time to start sowing that seed. Your seeds can go ahead of your future. Lord, I carry these sacrifices for you. Ask Ejimi, he's a witness. What did I do with all my scholarships? Not once did I. I was on two scholarships. I was on Mobile, I was on Total Fina Elf, then they used to call it. Then there was no GT Bank in Zaria. We we'll go to Kaduna and cash it. Ask him, he's a witness. Everything went for the kingdom. Other people were buying laptops, they were buying this. I used my scholarship for the kingdom. Behind every story, every glory there is a story don't just sit down desiring men's results this is what this covetousness in the body of christ oh god i like a jimmy's watch i like this i like pastor alpha's shoe stop those things that that's not how to claim you claim through obedience obedience we are really going to pray seriously because i want you to be exempted listen to me brothers and sisters the danger that looms around there is real danger psalm 91 tells us there is danger on your children born or unborn from the womb now children get mysteriously sick father does not have that sickness mother does not have that sickness from that period of conception to delivery the child comes out with one kind of nonsense I remember one of our ladies who gave birth to one baby he later died you know I remember them meeting me they gave it to the baby the baby was an imbecile you know nothing neck will not move hand will not move nothing and I remember the pain the mother used to go through I went back to God and I said Lord what happened what happened and then I told them I said look sacrifice is the last bus stop in this kingdom when all else fail you sacrifice is a master key it will tear that heaven open i show you a mystery there are times i've come to certain places that i know some doors will not open i prayed they did open i fasted they did open and i reached out through intelligence i took seeds that shook heaven and i swung those doors open and solomon loved the lord and solomon said gather me one thousand animals they said sir are you dashing people he said don't ask me any question bring knife slaughter them number one number two he said spill the blood there was a field god kept watching he said let's watch how far he will go when he got to 500 he didn't stop god said my god what is this who is this man who gave him this kind of heart 
to sacrifice immediately god came to him and said solomon you called me sacrifice has a voice it can call god i'm telling you a mystery some of you are in situations right now your education cannot bring you out it will not bring you out you are in a situation where you are about to break through something the pastor in your family with all his anointing did not was not exempted from that trouble bad luck people rise to certain levels the moment they reach there they crash you are number seven out of 13 people nobody's walking and you say i got first class you better switch there is a mystery of exemption everybody that married in your family the lifespan of the marriage was four years they prayed in tongues the marriage is scattered because there is a spirit covenanted authoritatively it takes sacrifice i have done this for myself i have done this for koinonia hi brothers and sisters you are sitting on blood you are not just sitting on chairs you are sitting on tears you are sitting on sacrifices that brought you that's what brought you here it's not joshua selman's revelation sacrifice many people cannot do this thing it's hard that's why very few are exempted i never told you it will be easy i won't lie to you there is he that weepeth there are things this man has done there are sacrifices i remember one time i'm sorry i'm having to say it. he carried a seed together with his wife and i knew this was a serious seed there are people here who have done it sacrifices unto death a kind of sacrifice that when you finish you say god i hope this thing is right i hope it works i told you about my mother my mother almost brought tears out of my eyes i think it was towards the end of last year she said her death will my mother said if she dies any benefit that will come they should transfer it to koinonia a woman alive covenanting her will for god where is the devil that will kill her that's the realm when you say for for me to live is christ and to die is king listen we rise in this kingdom through sacrifice we exempt ourselves through sacrifice strange sacrifice i have watched it open doors for me i have watched it open doors for people great men that you see in this nation the secret is not just the sacrifice of prayer their seeds have gone if i tell you i don't practice this i you, I, you I, those close to me know i am a bank of walking seeds nothing just stays idle i send it to my future i send it fast i may cry sending it hallelujah i was talking to a jimmy and i was telling him i said i have so much recharge card in my phone i don't know what to do he asked me how much i said forty-one thousand. what will i do with a recharge card my phone loaded with forty-one thousand. One naira is not from me one naira is not from me what will i do with it you are not ready for blessings till your seed speaks oh you mean you are enjoying no no when blood touches the earth heaven must answer who said your family will never be rich there is this cause of poverty and you have been giving you just give 10 10 000, give 10 naira. you are not ready to move oh let me tell you the truth there is a day you come and say lord my children i served idols my father served idols it was in idolatry i gave my life to christ i've not even stabilized my stand i know these altars are fighting me therefore i lift up a fortification gather unto me my saints psalm 50 verse 5 please give it to us they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice a covenant with me by sacrifice listen you are at a phase in your life where you should not pity money listen listen to me wasteful spending is bad 
but fearful spending is demonic you don't spend your money buying shoe spend your money breaking altars spend your money breaking covenant leave all those shoes don't be foolish they will come prove any point to anybody lord i have watched my elder brother rubbish i watched my elder sister she got married and got mad this first day this will not happen oh i know it will not happen because i'm in koinonia if you don't do what koinonia people are doing you'll be surprised i'm showing you the secrets brothers and sisters let me tell you they will sit with you like this and tell you they are coming to jail you coming to take you to prison coming to take you to this you cannot pay your rent your sacrifice that's when you see that sacrifice is powerful there is a lady i don't know if she testified i have the text message in my phone i shared it with you Jimmy. two days ago her mother practically died and the girl said no 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 way and she caught i think she may be a worker or so she sent a text i told her to come and share it by herself i don't know if she was a worker or whatever and do you know this lady said she said kai i can't use my faith again everything went bad and she sent me a text you know what she sent she said apostle i can't use faith i use the covenant you have with god do you know what i did i put the text i told you Jimmy, what i did i put the text and i threw it on my bed i said lord look at what this lady said her mother came back to life yesterday yesterday the text is still in my phone take over take over lord i've come into the end end of greed hallelujah hallelujah i have come listen listen till today they serve idols in my village till today they serve idols in my village with the reign of christianity you are not the first to have causes i told you demons used to oppress me as a man of god anointed healing the sick i went to pastors i said what is this thing that demons come to press me in the night they said i don't have faith i said what is faith i've done everything they define faith to be brothers and sisters there are certain altars that after you have prayed i wish what i'm telling you is a lie i know you are in christ but i show you the mysteries behind the pain of men there are some seeds alone that will break some altars and smash it to pieces and in one year one year when it was time to save man jesus christ god did not make a pronouncement he dragged his son when the son went to Golgotha, when his blood dripped that's why no power the only power that can overcome god is the power that can give a son with that same condition any other deity that can turn a god to become a son and sacrifice him will have more power than god he looked around the heavens and found no one greater and he swore by himself the seed shall bruise the head the seed ah. please look at me look at me if i have preached and i have told you a lie may a cause come upon me and my children that are unborn if i have manipulated you for any gain listen i don't care who you are how old you are what you read if you want to rise above witchcraft in this life you want to rise and match the head of the devil it's not just your prayer and your voice there is he that weepeth you don't just drop money like that the sacrifice is not in the money is the value on you and tie it with an expectation lord they say my womb will not open 
you have seen three of your sisters barring you are there jumping up and down and saying i am they are, they are not barring because they are devils they just do not understand the mystery of exemption koinonia is sitting upon this mystery that's why you see us rising by his grace those who don't understand will just think oh these people are just lucky there's no luck in this thing oh. there's no luck in this thing you will engage it there is a mystery there is a mystery that exempts men from all of these vicissitudes of life please i want you to believe it in the name of the lord god of heaven and open up yourself because we are going to do some serious prayers this night is not a night to just joke around we came to pray within the few minutes we have to pray i like you to pray remember we are exempting ourselves rise up on your feet and in the next five minutes i want you to blast in tongues as though one who is ready for exemption lord it can't continue like this lord my family cannot continue like this Pray, pray. Pray. The Lord will honor you. You are in the presence of the mighty one. You are accessing secrets that will exempt you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud as and serious. Please be serious. Say, Lord Jesus. The yoke of suffering. Say the yoke of suffering. The yoke of hardship upon my family and upon my life. I command that it be lifted tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lift it out of your life. There is such a yoke upon families. Doesn't matter whether you are working or not. Doesn't matter whether you are in business or not. You keep blaming other people. Whereas the trouble is from you. Come on, believers, pray. Come on, believers, pray. Show pray to Skeparatakata. Ebratala Soto Preke Shele Baranamala. Exemption. hallelujah hallelujah now listen i want you to pray three major areas in your life where that exemption must show immediately listen there are many areas choose three areas in your life and pray this is an instruction pray it with your heart mention it lord this unfruitfulness this 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 my family mention them if it's your finances and blast in tongues and say it must leave it must leave oh. 
Prophesy, prophesy, his ears are open, prophesy, his ears are open, prophesy, his ears are open, prophesy, Shekalabakata Braskata Balanaba. Lekabarada balada baka sabra daga tabarasa leka teka tebras exemption in this year of triumph I provoke it in this year of triumph I provoke it by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to pray and say, Lord, the attachment I have to money, the attachment I have to material things that will not let me sacrifice, take it away from my life. Please pray. You really need that separation. Carnality. 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 Attachment to money, attachment to material things that will not allow you release resources. The fear of lack, the fear of resources finishing. Cause it, cause it. Malakata praskada barado shubris, ende prata la koto sobris karia. Everything given to God multiplies. It does not diminish. Everything given to God multiplies. It does not diminish. For I spoke a word. Yes. You have been so, so good to me. I don't know the song, but I like the song. This is the part of the song I love. is a demonstration of God's love he knows that you already got born again at 40 when will you know God to become great already you are late you are late already so the dimension of his supernatural can bring mercy can bring favor jump and accelerate your life and push you forward otherwise why is he God please believe what I'm saying God knows that he called you into ministry and he knows the people he's sending you to. He knows the stubbornness in their heart that until they see miraculous signs, they won't come. So he, listen, he's not going to send you just with a salmon. No. How then will you demonstrate and defend what he sent you? Moses said, what will, who will I tell Pharaoh sent me? Power of 
God. Let us be a generation that can believe the power of God. That when God says, I can lift you, you believe it. When God says, I can anoint you, you believe it. When God says, I can turn your life around, you believe it. Please hear me. What more do you need to see to know that natural things don't count very much in this realm? You have to be outstanding by an agency that is not human. John 4, 48. Except ye see miraculous signs, you will not believe. Jesus himself said it. Except you see it. There is a demonstration of the hand and the might of God that must rest upon us and rest upon our generation. Why will you write your prayer request if it will not be answered? Why should you travel I'm aware that some of us have been here, right? A number of people that I ministered to in Abuja followed me here. There are people who have come from all over. There's a pastor, you're the one who came from Ukraine? From Ukraine, all the way. And for heaven's sake, why will you come and watch a man? Am I a, a comedian? This is not an amusement park. Oh, there is a God that sits in heaven. Please hear me. There is a God that sits in heaven that can speak, that can lift, that can turn a man's life around. Shake that unbelief. Shake that unbelief. Get it out of your life and believe that God is able to turn a man's life around. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. tell you one of the major things that I know God is going to be doing tonight is healing the sick there are mysterious diseases that are coming and latching upon people you see people dying for diseases and sicknesses with no name it's, it's like headache but it's not headache it's like chest pain but it's not chest pain it's like asthma but it's not asthma it's like a lump but it's not a lump. It's like a growth, but it's not a growth. Whatever it is, we know it's an oppression of the devil. Please sit down. Let me finish up and then we'll pray. So by the ministry of the anointing, number two, how blessings manifest, the second dimension is by the impartation of wisdom and understanding. The second way that the word becomes flesh is that the Lord by his spirit will impart upon a man the spirit of wisdom and understanding. There are certain results that don't need the supernatural as it were. They just need an awareness of the laws of God and the fortitude to walk in accordance with those principles. There are dimensions that doesn't just need an event. The power of God is coming on two people outside. Two people outside. Please bring them here. Two people outside. I started sensing a very mighty grace. Ah, tonight will be a great night of impartation. Please bring them here. Just listen to the word. The Lord will do a quick work. Two people. I see like rain. The rain of the Spirit is about to be drenched. For I spoke a word. Ali Baru Please bring them.
the Lord is saying I'm shifting you both of you that you are entering a dimension of the favor of God this is what I'm seeing you came here to contact the grace that will bring you into a strange realm of favor and I declare by the spirit of grace that everything that is not of the Christ over your lives and destinies this is miracle service it must bow to the name and the Lordship of Jesus Shadow you will light up Mountain you will climb up Coming out to me three and then we'll pray the third way that the word becomes flesh that possibilities get to you is through the ministry of men 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 Men are God's conduits. They communicate possibilities. Most of the favor that you need is already in the hands of a man. You need the ministry of men. I don't just mean the prophetic ministry of men. You need the giving ministry of men. You need the lifting ministry of men. You need the endorsing ministry of men. Please tonight, let your expectations be high. God will not disappoint you. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes a testimony. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon that situation, the word becomes a testimony when you are given spiritual illumination wisdom understanding the fortitude to comprehend spiritual things then the word becomes flesh when men are introduced in your life men are carriers of possibilities not just spiritual possibilities there are men that have the wealth to give you there are men that have the endorsement the leverage their credibility is an asset they can bring it upon your life and turn your life Everything that we seek for in this place tonight comes under these three categories. There are matters that only the anointing can solve tonight. There are matters that the quickening of the spirit, providing illumination, will channel you to solve. But there are things that men, 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 given by God. Listen, when the man at Get Beautiful met Peter and John, he didn't say such as in is in heaven he says such as i have there are things men have please hear me there are things that men have and they can give it there are things that men have and they can give it a man can have a car and give you the key to the car a man can have but you see the things that men have real blessings are not physical when a man gives you anything physical, it's not really a blessing. It's just a donation. Real blessings are spiritual. All the sons of Abraham, he gave them physical gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him the blessing. 
Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to do a quick walk tonight. But I trust God to heal the sick. This, 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 there is a grace today to, to damage all kinds of infirmity. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all. Healing all. They that were oppressed of the devil. Tonight, he will lift up that report, that threat that stands before the God of heaven. There are many of us here, I believe, who are in ministry. We may not exactly have needs. Tonight is also a night of impartation. Listen, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It can be transferred. You can carry something back that you did not come with. You can carry a grace that while you were in the car coming, it was not yet in your life. And your results will show what has been introduced in your life. Are we together? Please rise up, lift up your voice in one minute and declare, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm a believer tonight. Everywhere, outside, inside, pray. Diligent this the rewarder, the healer, the lifter. I want to pray. Please listen. Listen. Please don't get used to the ritual of what is done here. It is not just a ritual to pray, have people fall under the anointing. Be sensitive to what God is doing everywhere. But be sensitive to what he is doing in you, around you. Be sensitive to the graces you are receiving. Be sensitive to the prophecy that is coming upon you. Be sensitive to the things that are changing. Be sensitive to the mantles that are resting upon you. Be sensitive to what is happening. Be sensitive to the speakings of the Spirit. So I, I don't want you to get used to the, the, the ritual. Oh, you're about to see people in front. No, 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 no. Let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven. And he's the lifter of men. Please hear me. You are a visitor here coming. You are welcome. We'll acknowledge you later on. But please, insist that you did not waste your time to come for nothing. Please, I know you have heard. And I know you came for an experience. Many of us have inconvenienced ourselves not under the best of conditions to be here. Please don't waste your stay. Let your heart be open to carry something tangible. Hallelujah. Satan is behind many predicaments of our lives. Satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen. Please let me have your attention because I want to pray now. And the power of God, listen please, as I begin to pray, there are people here, you see, God may not necessarily, don't worry, it's okay, excuse me, that's alright, leave the seats please. There are people here who are sincere people, even believers, but your life and destiny is under the strange influence of the operation of darkness. The Bible says many things happen in Mount Zion. And one of it is that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please, I like you to believe. This is no ordinary prayer. Remember, it is the Spirit and the Bride that is talking. 
you are only seeing the bride but it's the spirit and the bride I'm about to pray and I want you to please believe because everything that does not represent Christ must go today now A few weeks ago, I had an encounter and the Holy Spirit told me you are about to experience a new lifting in your authority in the Spirit. Listen, please. This is the first time I'll be sharing it. And I saw, every time I see it, this is what I see. I see like a badge in the Spirit, a promotion. And the, the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension that as you declare, you will see it happen. It's, this thing is a grace. It's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondages. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now I declare by the spirit of the Christ. And I decree and declare. That in the name of Jesus. At the count of three I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. And except God is not God. Any planting that is not of the Christ. Over your life and your destiny. I speak by the grace of God almighty. That he must let you go now. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command devils. I command spirits. Yokes that have tied down the destinies of men. Be gone now by the spirit of the Christ. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Go now. Release every destiny. 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 I decree and declare. The Bible says, even the captives, the lawful captives, shall be delivered. Therefore, I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny, right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost, be delivered now. 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 Be I command closed doors be open. Closed doors be open. Right now, be open. Closed by the hand of darkness. I declare be open. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh hey.
is showing me chains over people's heads I decree and declare anyone here under any kind of yoke at the count of three inside outside online I want you to shout that name again it's not a ritual done out of unbelief there is force and power in the name one two three every orchestration go now be loose now be loose now in the name of Jesus be loose by the authority of Jesus by the authority of Jesus by the authority of Jesus the Lord is showing me people who have been at the same level for many years there is nothing you do in time that moves you forward in the name of Jesus I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs I'm about to pray that prayer anyone who has been kept at the same position right now by the anointing of the Spirit I declare that limitation broken now broken now help them broken now broken now broken now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah right away I want to pray against barrenness I'm sensing the grace don't wait till you are married if there is anyone here by the Spirit of God by whatever means your womb has been closed by the authority of heaven I declare right now I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people married or unmarried let that womb be open now be open now be open now I tell you the anointing of God is coming on people whether you are married or not some of you are standing in for your loved ones I declare again womb be open now be open now be open now be open now I command every devil ah, I'm seeing such I'm still seeing people's feet tied like a chain around the feet of people right now I decree and declare every chain holding anyone now in the name of Jesus I break those chains now I break those chains now. I break those chains now. I break those chains now. Hallelujah. If you have any abdominal pain, lay your hands right now. Lay your hands just on your stomach. Any kind of abdominal pain. Doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid, doesn't matter whatever. Just lay your hands here right now. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. Right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is coming upon your stomach area. And in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle right now. Let there be a miracle right now. I'm seeing a number in the realm of the Spirit 21. And the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people. And that grace is for direction. You are at a point in your life where you are confused. You honestly don't know what to do. But right now I stretch my hands. 21. I see it in the realm of the spirit. Right now let the anointing of the spirit bring in direction. Ending confusion. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Direction. Direction. Direction in ministry, direction in business, direction, geographic direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A 
Baruda Shalatusa Diakata. I want to pray for speed. I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now, please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression. I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hands by the privilege of God's grace and I declare, I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three. Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three. Receive speed. 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 In your destiny. Speed. Do in one month what one year could not do. Do in one month what five years could not do. Do in one month in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're trying to conserve time. There is a lot to do. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. 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 All those who are in front under the anointing here, I command the devils that have oppressed you. This is the house of God. Right now at the count of three, release them. Release everything you have tied down. One two three go go now every strange spirit go now go now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty janet i'm hearing a name janet hold on please don't don't be rowdy just relax stand up my dear that lady on green stand up where are you coming from Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax. Calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen. God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many genets. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you as I'm, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God. We're going to have to do a quick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the Spirit. Let's just walk that instruction first. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare on all of you. I may not have time to prophesy one by one, but every barrier that stands between you and the next level, I declare let it go now I curse it by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God is coming on a lady just where this my brothers are standing bring that person just this row I'm seeing a cloud just right here right now as I'm speaking the anointing of the Spirit is coming on one person there please bring the person is a lady bring her Janet I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ hi this is an instruction God is giving me there is a family I'm seeing the family it's a whole pattern. Nobody marries. No matter what happens. I'm about to pray. The power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family. Please, I want you to believe and receive. I declare that marital delay. This is the instruction God is giving me. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. The Lord is opening my eyes. 
and in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing the map of Benway state an anointing is coming right now on Benway God is bringing a miracle I release my I stretch my hands and I declare a miracle right now it's a sign and a wonder how God does it Benway state Benway state Benway state I cause the workings of darkness over that territory in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus the Lord is taking me to a neighboring state I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state and the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft I don't know who are those who are from there but I stretch my hands Kogi state may that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory that is under the yoke of bondage be free now be free now Kogi state be free now be free now God does these things that men will fear him my sister look at me shout Jesus as loud as you can something is leaving you this is what I'm seeing for you and for your family members let that devil never return to you again in the name of Jesus Christ we look to Yahweh Yahweh my hope is Yahweh Yahweh I'm hearing a name Agnes prophecy takes a lot of time so we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes 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 I'm hearing that name please very quickly because I want to take out time and God is visiting three families at Overflow 2. Overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing, just like fire. Three families, three families by the Spirit of the Living God. Agnes, who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes, your sister. No, you are not here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Come. Hi. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that violent devil must let you go now even by the spirit of the there is no hiding place in the name of Jesus there is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness I curse you by the God of heaven and I declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life in the name of Jesus Christ just hold that there I'm going to hold your hand it's a strange mystery I'm going to hold your hand but the person who will fall is on this road bring the person for me in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare 
just don't worry leave the baby the person who will fall is not this lady he's on this row like this this row right to the back in the mighty name of jesus i declare by the spirit of the living god that everything that does not name the name of christ right now i command it must go in the name of jesus christ it must go by the grace of god i set you free my dear in the name of jesus let me pray for you father there is please don't be embarrassed we may not prophesy to everyone but there is a woman here don't be embarrassed you just had a miscarriage usually i would not ask you to come but the lord is asking to come out who is that person please there is a yoruba family that is under a very strange attack under a strange attack i'm praying right now i don't know where they are but i'm going to pray for you by the spirit please don't confuse the cases so that i can minister to them in the name of jesus i pray for that family it's a yoruba family from Quara State. Yoruba family from Quara State. I'm seeing it by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. That family is here or anyone who represents that family, I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear, that everything that is not the planting of the Lord, the hand of God is upon you. And the Lord is saying in the seasons that come, you are going to start having visitations. There is a visitation that God is bringing. And that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to. And the Lord is saying that you'll be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, huh? Because that's the same way you will come here and testify. Listen, God is not going to embarrass you for nothing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. This is one big family and we're intelligent people. We will never come and just embarrass someone like that. If there's anything that looks embarrassing, just know that these things um, are spiritual. My dear, that young lady, go in. Come, lift your hands. God is not done with you yet. Huh? This is, this is, you would have left this girl now. She would have probably just gone like that. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, take what you put in her dream life. Let it live now. Take what you put inside her through the dream. Miscarriage. Please come. Please don't feel embarrassed. This is a family. Did I pray for you? Did I pray for you? It's all right. If I prayed for you, just go back. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go and return with your child according to the time of life. No more miscarriage whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, you will return with child according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, please place your hand. In the name of Jesus, return with child. Return with child. In the name of Jesus. There is someone here, you are in ministry. I've not done the impartation yet, but I'm seeing an anointing come on you. And this is for your ministry. There is a level of expansion that you have been praying for. And God is about to answer that prayer. I stretch my hands. I don't know where that person is. But in the name that is above all names, may that anointing, like a mighty rushing wind, in the name of Jesus. There's someone here, God, this night, is giving you a ministry to teenagers. An anointing is coming on you. Your ministry 
will be to teenagers. I don't know where that person is, but Lord, I stretch my hands. Right now, may that man to find the person. In the name of Jesus, I birth that ministry by the Spirit. I birth that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare, in the name of Jesus, let there be a birthing. I draw from the bowels of prophecy and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Your sister and you, why is she here? Miscarriage? Are you married? You're sure? In the name of Jesus, place your hand there. I agree with you. Every plague of miscarriage goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ, according to the time of life, return with your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your sister, where is she? Abuja. Tell her that she was prayed for and she should expect a miracle. In the name of Jesus, I declare. You're standing in for her, but I declare the power of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession. Now, I know that it's, it's, a, it's a grace we will all desire, but there are four exact people. Four exact people, some inside, some outside. Lord, I don't know where they are, but that grace, a dimension of the intercessory ministry, capacity to travail by the Spirit, In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is she here? Come. Where are you from? Kaduna. How long have you been married? Last year. Last year. Madam, you came out here for miscarriage, but what God is dealing with is more than miscarriage, huh? We'll pray for you. Where's your husband? Here, sir. Because I'm seeing him here. Is he here? Yes, sir. Where is he? Husband, please come. Thank you. Is the man here? How are you, my friend? Stand up. God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? Where? I'm up in Kaduna. Sir. Kaduna, I want to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from Ojibwe. There is a grace. Please hear me. What? What? Where do you work? I work with the Alliance of Africa. There are two things I'm seeing. One, I'm seeing real estate. Number two, I'm seeing distribution. Distribution of things. Go and write them down and pray over them. This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God. If you hear what I'm telling you. You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away want and lack from you. And that's why I said this is more than just the issue of barrenness or whatever it is. Huh? We'll pray for you. And madam, I want to stop the dreams. Dreams. Huh? I have to pray for you. Sometimes you don't share them. But there are dreams that are oppressions. A lot of oppressions. I want to pray for you. This will end in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, this is July, August, September. By October, write it down. Your life will change. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. You see, my, my brother, the realm of the spirit, what is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. It's the grace for favor that came on you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you 
by the Spirit of God, these three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, put your hand in your, on your stomach. According to the time of life, huh? in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm seeing something like a rope being loosed from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them. So that the day they come and stand, it's, it's not to glorify a man. It is to show that God, oh, God is still alive. Huh? I lose this in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will return with a strange miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sir, can I talk to you please? This man. Yes, sir. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. I don't know you. Is it alright if I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Three things. Number one, I want to pray that sickness will not take you to the grave. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is our, our prophet. I want to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, I want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released, let it come to you. Does it make sense what I'm telling yes, you? Sir. Yes, sir. I will pray for you. This is one of the reasons why you are here. I want to pray. It will surprise you the way God will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you. And then number three, there is a man from Lagos that God is going to connect you with. God is going to use that man to turn your life around. I don't know what you do, but please, I want you to mark this. But the most important prophecy is sickness. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is an attack. It will start one morning. You just stand up and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having memory loss. It's of the devil we must pray. Madam, come. God is about to change your life because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. Is that true? Yes, sir. Stand here. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer. Yes. And you are saying the Lord should, that should visit yes, you, that you did not come from far for yes, nothing. Sir. Where did you come from? Come. Where are the other two people? We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. congratulate you in the name of Jesus because your life will change in a very remarkable way madam I want to pray for you look at me stand up my friend why by the life here who is sick madam I want to pray for you yes, you see, ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, yeah. you're going to start having what looks like a growth. <laughs> and it will later become cancer. Because uh, I'm looking at this woman. Jesus. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just whine. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Jesus. Madam. You did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. Yes, no. Sir. I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister and the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never, 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 never. That everyone encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir, I want to pray for you. He's, where is he coming from? Adamawa too. I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. Come, you are a very nice man, but please stand up. Please stand up. I don't cry. Oh, yeah. oh dear. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. Oh, you just see people laugh and praise the Lord. 
that that is a dance of faith it's just a, a joy of faith because i'm looking at this man you will not believe what this man has gone through is that true what do you do sir i'm alone bro. washing with his hand yes. this is what i'm saying this man guy oh dear this man is supposed to be connected to a politician in Adamawa State. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zechariah. Yes, he's presenting Mitch Kamadagasi. This is what I'm telling you. Just listen, let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member and yet he's doing, now I'm not saying laundry is an insult, but the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. We had a good relationship. And just of a sudden. He changed. He changed. No, he did not change. Somebody told him huh, that they can use you to kill him. And that he has, it's not only you. I'm not a pro, don't go around fighting anybody. Huh? That this man one day will kill him. They were saying, Honorable Kayankali. Be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that. Who already know you? Because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything away. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you this world we live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how may your enemies not get to the gates before you. That the counsel of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny. And this man, it's not that he's using a laundry to washing clothes like, a, like an animal. Sir, you have come here for God to change your life. And I'm praying for you by the God of heaven, the one who put this miracle service together. Let things change now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare favor upon your life. Let things turn around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? English, how sir, speak anyone. <laughs> the bad visitation in every area of my family. I will pray for I you. I want male children. <laughs> oh, healing. You have female children. I have two. And you I want a male. Allergies. Yes, I need male children. That's what, uh, there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want you to say what you're about to say loud, huh? Because one day your husband will be changed and he will hear this, this miracle service message. It's true. I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise us. It's God that gives children. And, and I don't mean to insult anyone, but please, let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children, Otherwise, you are not this. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you than to antagonize your wife or husband. There is a culture of the kingdom. Listen, when we get born again, the values, the value system of the kingdom, the spirit life must be at work in us. In as much as I know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children, male and female, when our people are getting married, I pray for them that God will give them children, male and female. But you cannot antagonize your wife or your husband and say, give me um, male children, female children. Of course, I understand. I'm, I'm an African. Because of issues of inheritance and other things, but we have to be careful. Whatever God has not given you, you cannot have it. And if you go to the devil to have it, let me tell you, the consequence will be waiting for you. Are we together? Madam. Look at me. Do you believe if I pray for you, yes, you will come here with a male child? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I told God, you. I told you. Yes, sir. Madam, what did you see me doing for you in a dream? Sir, you declare he lives upon my life and you say it is done. Listen, number one, number one, yes, God is bringing favor to your yes, life. Sir. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male child. I want you to believe it. You believe that? Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman. 
in the name of Jesus. Let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. And we agree, we receive that your husband is born again. And he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? I'm from Adama. We have together. She's my okay. Sister. I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing. Kaya cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a charm. Yeah. Believe what I'm telling you. Father, I decree and declare, surprise these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changes your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Who came from Kano? From where? From Air Force Base. Air Force Base. This is your husband. What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said, God can do it, Abby, madam. Mm. Since 2005, no child. No messes again. Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry, I say this, please, reduce public life, watching football, going for marriages that you don't have any business. I'm not saying you should not honor people, but the times that we're living in now, the problems on people, is not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine that can solve people's problems. 2005, how many years is that? Um, 14 years, no child, her period ceased completely, the devil sat on it. Let me see how you will have a child. Madam, don't cry, it's okay. I don't know you, I've never seen you. You can see, how will you be sitting there and then God will just call you. I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ears. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing... Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? In the name of Temeko, I... I I banish them far. You hear what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a man, I'm not, please, I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come, supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? What now? I'm, I'm the only one. Six months. Yes. He has gone away. He, he just, I, I went to his office to tell him that I'm coming to Zaria today. So he now said that I have to he just looked at me. You are not divorced, <laughs> but he has just gone. Sir? He, he just went, but you are not divorced. Uh, he's saying uh, where, they are, where they are drinking this thing, so he just left me. He may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba, when people go through things, be careful. When you are about to cross people and call them evil and call them this, remember that stability is according to the measure of your understanding of who God is. And there are times that even the strong get pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. We are people of love. Don't come here and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman and think the husband is this. Mm -mm. We are not here to show who is right or who is wrong. We are here to show that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam, hold my hands. I command this spirit 
in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus madam I speak to you first may God reconcile you back to your husband second you will take in according to the time of life your baby will stay and you will return back with the child in the mighty name of Jesus Christ every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage I curse it now in Jesus name see anyone here I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now then we'll pray for the sick we have to be fast but no, you don't have to come out but you are here the moment you start a relationship with a guy he becomes serious and just when he's deciding to do anything marriage it must scatter you continue to enter relationships relationships re loving and unloving loving and unloving today you are in love tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself I'm praying right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit inside and outside anyone who is under that category by the God of heaven let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity you see please give this woman her photo that woman under the anointing we have to pray um, the Lord is asking me we are praying I, I hope I'm not boring you I'm not wasting your time the Lord is showing me a family here I may not ask you to come out but in this family you never settle maritally but you will have children no matter how you go around it you find out that you have children out of marriage out of and and it's not like the men will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children the lord wants to deliver that family right now in the name of jesus christ ah. Why is she coming? Why is she coming out? The, the family is, she just came out on her own. No, don't worry. Well, she, she, she's crying because of her pain. It's possible she's part of that family. But I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not. You see, the thing about the anointing, I told you, sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that, that you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children. But the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children. I pray right now. I don't know where they are. But in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare that that yoke is destroyed now. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. That yoke is destroyed now. My dear, look at me. Come. It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. You see, let me tell you, for all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because let me remind you, even as he has reminded you that it pays to serve Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It pays to serve Jesus. It may not look like he will come every day, but the day he comes, he will come with dignity and honor and lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hands. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockade to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Someone will run out under the anointing. Hold the person and bring the person out. That will be the last prophecy. The power of God is coming on someone. It's not something you can control. By the anointing, you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Please, when that happens, bring the person. I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray 
for the sick right now. It's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Meanwhile, let this lady come. My dear, hold my hands. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus. I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it goes now over by the grace of God. There are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly, gentle man will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children, that's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, kapaush kalibra atasubati katea, garu sekete barato shadekata, Shaproske paru kapa, embregete shali karuska baruta, emprakato segata. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I curse so something is burning here. I curse that spirit now. I curse that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be embarrassed, but I see the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hands. Let that devil leave you now. That a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw. In the name of Jesus, by the spirit of the living God, I curse that spirit. And I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now. By the God of heaven, I declare be free from that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick. Our time is gone, but we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. All the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe. Um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three. If you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who are prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer. But particularly, if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue. And we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we're going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. While you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer requests? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them. And let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one... Um, overflow two overflow three and then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down let's call that overflow four okay okay there is there is overflow two b then there is overflow four please listen this is overflow one this is overflow two there is overflow two b from this place right to the roadside, second equa down. Then there's overflow four. Just from the gate of overflow three. Then we have overflow three in the main building. And then online. Please make your way. Come out and stand according to those various overflows. There will be people there to minister to you right now. We'll do it very fast. Our time is gone. Please submit your prayer request. I'll be laying hands on all of them here right now. You can just wave them. There will be someone by your side. We apologize for those of you standing because your seats were foiled. 
you would soon have it back and then be back to your seat. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us, you can allow them to sit on your seat pending when their seats will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Stretch your hands to this request. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service. This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we are declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Baratos Calabrandege Baratos Kedi Apratos Zadege Baratos Shalekatos Ente Pratas Salagato Bradigini Carusa Tapradisha. Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God. Even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name of that is above all names. There are, hold on please. There are people here, this is a death sentence. There are people here, this is an impossible situation. There are people here, God will, the person God will talk to is far. But I pray, what looks impossible, I bow my knees to the God of heaven, the one who honors me when I pray. And I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living Lord. I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith that by this time next month you return here rejoicing. Please don't let the 
devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been. Uh-uh. 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 Every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered, we release it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every pattern that is not just an individual but is a pattern that is written here. As God is visiting you here, every other person connected to you whose request you have written here, we command a miracle for them where they are. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are situations here that need the blood. I declare by the mystery of the blood. There are three that bear witness in the heavens. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven. By the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant. We cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request. In the name of Jesus. And the king could not sleep in the night. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And he saw there written what Mordecai did. Whoever must remember you for this request to be granted. By the God of heaven, we open the book of remembrance tonight. Any man holding what belongs to you, which is the reason why you are writing anything here, we put pressure on them to release it now. Every family here webbed in shame and reproach. It looks like there is no dignity. The speakings of God does not seem to find expression here. I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven. Please help those under the anointing. That by the power of the Holy Ghost, shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Therefore, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here, by the God of heaven, may you see them no more forever. May you see them no more forever. The same way I stand upon this request, I command that you stand upon every challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak over your life. The doors that have followed you here closed. In the name of Jesus, please believe. Let your don't be distracted. Focus on the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I command those doors be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Every grounded ministry here, every grounded business, every grounded family, hear the word of the Lord. I command and I declare, come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Every helper assigned from God who has not yet paid attention to you, and what you request I stand by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus I compel them to attend to your matters I compel them to attend to your matter I compel them to attend to your matter everything that should have happened and has not yet happened according to the program of God you know you should have entered that level and you are not there 
by prophecy I push you to that level by prophecy I push you to that level listen you see let me tell you what I'm doing I'm not just speaking I'm placing something upon your life you may not see it but you leave this place and watch what happens to you then you will see things turn around let me pray for you the kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life please receive this one in the name that is above all names may that mantle like a cloak take favor take favor carry favor carry favor in the name of jesus every area you have struggled in your life you have done what you know to do in the name of jesus i declare that that struggle comes to end now now please listen the anointing your destiny needs for this season please listen every season has a grace requirement every season there are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them. Yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place. I pray for you. This is an impartation. Wherever you are, I declare like the dew of heaven, the kind of grace you must carry for this season. Let it land on your destiny now. By this anointing, I forbid you from being ignored. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid you from being ignored. I forbid you from being trivialized. No man will look down on you. They came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him the things that must be done through your hands in this season for it to be said this is the Lord's doing as you are lifting your hands may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits anyone in ministry here I declare over you go back to your various assemblies and platforms let there be fire on your altar fire on your altar fire on the ministration let the gifts of the spirit work powerfully in the name of jesus we're rounding up let's pray over our finances this issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees bringing many families to their knees distracting people the time we should spend on the things of the kingdom we are focusing on money what to eat what to wear house rent building projects it is not the will of God In the name of Jesus Christ, Ebenezer, the helper of men, I declare this month, even beginning from today, receive strange financial help. Receive strange financial help. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, strange financial help. Everyone under the sound of my voice, trusting God for an honorable job. Listen, there are jobs that don't have honor. They are time wasters. They are devourers. I pray for you. The kind of job that represents dignity, that will honor you and help you to build your home well. May the God of heaven give you such a job. Let me pray for your spiritual life. If you have cars, you have houses, 
and your spiritual life is not on fire, you are not doing well. The first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life. That your prayer life fire, word life fire, fellowship with the spirit fire. No room for up today, down tomorrow. I pray for you, fresh fire upon your prayer life. 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 Every lukewarmness, slumber, gluttony, these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency, I declare in the name of Jesus, receive victory over them. The grace that can keep a man in the presence of God, the, the staying power that you can stay with the word, stay in prayer, not rush in and rush out and one power. God is not a magician. I pray for you. The unction to stay, receive it in the name of Jesus. Every dimension in the spirit that is supposed to have been activated. There are some of you now, listen. There are levels of graces you should have left. Sincerely, there are dimensions of power. There are haziness, certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception. There is a level of authority. There is an office you should be sitting on now, but it's not yet there. I pray for you. The mantle that will shift you to that level. May that grace come upon you now. The mantle that will shift you to that level. May that grace come upon you now. Listen. Everything in your life that has refused to grow. God gave you a ministry that has refused to grow. No membership, nobody is placing a demand on your grace. God gave you a business, it has refused to grow. No increase, no impact. Anything that is alive grows. Whatever has stopped growth in your life, I bring that thing to an end now. Finally, let me pray, please. The spirit of infirmity. I told you that this is, this is, I came to pray and rebuke that spirit. Because that spirit like the angel of death is moving over families. Attacking children. Attacking all kinds of people. Headache will just kill a man for nothing. Kata. And they will say it's cancer. Pain around your breast. They will say you have a malignant a tumor see let me tell you whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life challenges are not the issue but that you stand and fight the good fight of faith until you see what God said if you have not seen what God said don't stop I pray for you the spirit of a warrior the grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God. May that grace rest upon you now. As a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted at noonday, the spirit of death. If there is anyone here that death is looming around the corridors of your life, or your loved ones, or those connected to you spiritually and by bloodline, I declare, let death lose its grip over you now. Yeah. 
receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about usurping authority over people. There is a real grace. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. May that grace and may that honor rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise. Mighty God. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we thank you. By the wave offering we receive. We receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. Please let me say this. Let there be no movements till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning. And in reality, we believe that it is the greatest miracle. There are people here who came to this place confused, looking for Jesus sincerely. Religion refused to give you. Sometimes we men of God disappointed you but you are still looking for Jesus. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this night. Don't sit down dilly You know that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projector screens. But you are here, quickly. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now. Quickly. I don't expect you to be thinking about it. Keep standing. It's something you should know. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Don't let any friend hold your hand. And say, don't embarrass yourself. Don't let any relative keep you bound. Our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me, please. Believers, listen. It is important that we never lose out on soul winning. Let me say this. It is not just an evangelical agenda. It is not an orthodox agenda. It is not a man of God agenda. It is the only way men come to this kingdom. No matter what we do, please, you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't be careless over soul winning. It is important that people be given an opportunity, except you don't know what salvation is. If you really understand what the new birth is, you will desire even your enemy to be saved. It is the only gateway. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Salvation is a giver's gift to you. You receive. 
I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you are standing here rededicating your lives. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing, honestly. Some of you are here genuinely for the first time. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you call on his mercy, he will act as though he's not seeing what is wrong with you again. The mercy of God is powerful. Religion is what drives people away from God. Lift your right hand. Those around the various overflows, join them. Please say after me, sincerely, Jesus is in this place. You are not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. This night, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that according to Scripture, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I'm not only heaven bound, but I reign in life. I receive of the Holy Spirit from today. I declare and forever that I'm a child of God. Amen. I declare over you by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven. The Lord himself is granting you a new beginning. I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way. I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way. For many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you alongside um, those at the various overflows. There should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly. And there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone, but um, please listen. We're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers, and we're done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us by God's grace. I know that God will grant us the grace. We'll soon have our place, and we'll reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, I, I, know, I welcome everybody. We're going to welcome the first timers now. But particularly, I just want to honor a few people. First, I want to bless our precious people, the delegates from um, the King's Court and the Oasis. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The redeemed Christian Church of God. That's, um, that's the church that Nathaniel Bassi pastors. God bless you. Thank you. There are a group of people here, adorable people. These people take... They take care of me so much every time we have a meeting around their place and um, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I want us to honor the pastor from Ukraine. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. And um, now I know there are so many people. Please don't find offense. It's by no way belittling you. Every We believe the law of honor is one of our foundational um, values, our pillars here. I just felt... I am indebted to some of the people that are connected to these ones, and so I just wanted to, to do that honor. And I think, I hope I'm right. Yes, it should be him. Um, I saw Elisha Maman somewhere. He just squeezed himself. That's him. May God bless you. Very humble and very great man. I love you. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Every other person who has come here, especially for those of you who came from so very far. Um, aside from those that I called, within a few minutes, I will request that you come um, and stand here so that we will honor you. We believe in honor. And I know that in many churches, they have different ways of receiving people, but we don't fake things and we don't pretend things here. When we call you out to honor you, we really mean it. It's not some Christian stage managed acting, no. Genuinely, sincerely. So wherever you are, Aside from the extreme overflows, I would request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. But for those of us who are here, 
overflow one, overflow two. Please gallantly walk and come right here. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to honor you. You're that important and we love you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Hallelujah. Please stand. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let them come while I talk because of time. Keep coming. Let me tell you this. You see, it's all right. Praise God. Just listen to me while they come. It's a lesson that I want to teach all of us. Please learn this. Never take men for granted. When, when God honors you, please hear me, pastors. I tell you why we stop getting members in our churches. Because we get to points where we believe we are too big to honor the people. In other words, they don't mean anything. I always thank God and appreciate every one person who takes the pain to come here. Thank God for the wonderful things that he's doing. But remember that nobody is obliged anywhere to honor you and to promote what you represent. And when you find a people who can make such investments, value them. Are we together? Whether you're a pastor, whether you're a businessman, this world is the world of men. Place honor on men. He says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Influence is your blessing when you honor men. Thank you so much, every one of you. I wish I had the time to really walk to you one by one and hug every one of you. And I mean it from the depth of my heart. But on behalf of Jesus Christ himself, the apostle of the church, I welcome you to Koinonia in the name of Jesus. Many of you have heard about the wonderful things that God is doing here. Many of you have partaken of the same. And it's my joy to truly welcome you. You have come from far, within and outside this nation. Um, I'm sure that there are people here that cut across all walks of life. Thank you very much. We truly appreciate you. This is our miracle service. Um, we meet here Fridays and special times on Sundays um, when there's a fixed time. But I just want you to know that I love you. We love you as a family of faith. Thank you for taking the time. And um, we want to pray for you. Truly, let me tell you this. You will not have to tell people you came here. The glory and the kind of results you will see in your life will be a testament. Amen. Let's stretch our hands to them and bless them. We love you and we are praying for you. From the depth of our hearts, we are blessing you. Blessing your ministries, blessing your businesses, blessing your career, blessing your family. We want to see the hand of God upon your life. We want to see you loving the Lord like never before. We want to see you growing in the things of God. We want to see you walking in purpose and destiny. We want to see the gates of hell stamped by and through your life. This is why we pray for you. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. The Lord review. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.